For some unexplainable reason, solar energy is extremely expensive in the United States in comparison with other countries such as Australia. However, the staggering thing about this fact is that the United States has neared 50% emission-free electricity with wind and solar setting national records and solar is up a staggering 23%. Hello my friends, isn't this good news? Welcome to the channel, I'm the Electric Viking, great to see you. I love reading these headlines, it's fantastic, this brightens my day up. United States, you're doing well. Don't be too hard on yourselves, because you guys are actually doing incredibly well, considering I don't really fully understand why, and no one seems to really understand why solar energy costs three times more in the United States as it does here in Australia. Something needs to change there. Imagine if solar energy was one third of the cost in the US compared to what it is now. And we're seeing rapid uptake of solar energy in the US, even at these very high prices. But if it came down in cost by 66%, that would change completely. The United States power grid crossed 45% emission-free electricity in April, which will probably be the peak clean generation number for the year as hydro and nuclear fall in that month in particular. However, these records are great news. The United States power grid will soon have a month where it is powered by more than 50% emissions-free electricity sources, a milestone which will most likely occur in April or May of 2023. The emissions-free generation is likely to come from approximately 17% nuclear, 9% solar, 19% wind, and 7% hydroelectric. The grid in the United States is changing rapidly. I think most people don't realize just how quickly these changes are taking place. Unfortunately, the US didn't quite get to 50% in April this year, but you guys did reach 45.4%, and that is actually a very, very good number. Year to date, over 10% of the hours of electricity generated in 2022 have been 50% or more emissions free. 50% or more emissions free. According to the Department of Energy's Energy Information Administration, the EIA, hourly energy monitor, the tool's preliminary numbers suggest that around 43% of the electricity in May was generated by non-fossil sources. I think that by the time we get to 2030, that figure will be closer to 90%. However, both wind and solar generated their all-time peak values in April of this year. Things are not slowing down in the US. According to the EIA, solar generated 4.4% of all electricity from the beginning of the year through to the month of April 2022. This value is 23.7% greater than the same period last year. So that's a 23.7% growth in 12 months. That's actually a pretty big difference. All you need is a few more years like that. And where do you look? You're looking massive numbers. For the month of April, solar made up 6% of all electricity in the United States, a monthly record. That's a growth of 18% over April of 2021. So what about for residential solar? Well, for small scale solar compared to last year at this time, it's up 21%. So yeah, a lot of people are still buying solar across the United States, not just businesses, but actual people, residential, homeowners and the like, right? The EIA projects that solar electricity will deliver 5% of all electricity in 2022, a percent increase over the 4% of total electricity it generated in 2021. Year-to-date electricity demand in 2022, including distributed generation, is up 4.5% over last year. So America's electricity demands are going to increase. They're probably going to about double like they predict Australia's will by 2050. So you're talking in the next 28 years, probably a doubling of energy needs in the US. Now I should point out that the IEA is comically wrong on a lot of things. They're always conservative on their numbers. They'll say electric car sales will go up by 2% next year and then they go up by 10 or 20. Or they're consistently, consistently under quoting. It's what they seem to do. It's what, for some reason, it's the way they've always operated. So I think these numbers could be significantly better in future than what the IEA is actually predicting. The increased solar generation is a result of 23.6 gigawatts of US solar deployment in 2021, a new record. 
According to the Solar Energy Industries Association, 23.6 gigawatt represents 19% more deployed capacity than was deployed in 2020. This volume was large enough that it grew the nation's solar fleet by over 24% from 97.7 gigawatt hours of capacity deployed. This pushed the utility solar scale industry to a record 50 gigawatts of instantaneous generation. That's a lot of instantaneous generation. According to the SEIA, the first quarter saw 3.6 gigawatt of capacity deployed across all project sizes, residential through utility. For the month of April, the EIA notes that 47 megawatts of utility scale capacity was deployed across 10 projects. Those projects included Mountain View Solar, River Valley Solar, Slate Hybrid, Tesla Reno Gigafactory, which now has more solar on that factory than any other factory in the world, Central Line Solar LLC, TPE King Solar Holdings, Jamison Solar, which is in Florida, Luciana, Jicarilla Solar 2, and County Road 17. So those projects are in Pasco, Marion, Kings, Story, Pinal, Providence, Polk, Tulare, Rio Arriba, and Chenango. Deployed capacity in April is trending behind the first quarter of the year, which averaged 30 projects per month. In the US, the fall and spring months have the lowest electricity demand. This is because there is less heating and cooling demand during these temperate weather conditions. The price of electricity often trends down during this period in time. Since wind and solar resources generate electricity without fuels and thus without additional costs, they are almost always up and running. Coal and gas tend to shut down during these seasons to avoid burning fuel during low price periods and to perform necessary repairs and upgrades. It's quite expensive to maintain coal and gas power plants. And when you shut them down, they still cost you money. So you're shutting them down and you're still having to pay for them. To keep them going, it actually does cost money. You can't just shut them down and pay nothing. Now, these shutdowns allow wind and solar power to take over larger chunks of generation. However, it's a complex time of the year when we talk about clean electricity generation. Nuclear power plants also tend to shut down in spring or fall for annual maintenance. Wind power tapers down off its peaks in February and March. Hydroelectric power historically is expected to peak in the springtime as snow melts. However, a 1,000-year drought in the western USA has been reducing hydroelectric output. And also, solar generation naturally increases from winter to the summer solstice peak in June. As America hit 45.4% of emission-free electricity in April of this year, PV Magazine USA says that you will come close to hitting 50% in 2023 and definitely break 50% in 2024. This is based on data that the US has added greater than 3.3% of new emissions free kilowatt hours per year since 2014 for every single year. We're talking that's seven straight years of data that you've surpassed those numbers. In the United States favor is wind and solar, deploying massive volumes. Hopefully additional nuclear facilities will not close especially since nuclear power has been legislated heavily financially for incentives. But it's only really a matter of time before nuclear power plants close as cheaper solar and wind replace them. So there you go, US, congrats, you're getting there. It's not that far away. You will eventually, probably not that far away. I think about 10 years get to 100% emissions-free electricity generation. And guess what? That's going to mean every electric car will be powered by the sun and the wind. And I think that's awesome news. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.